In this module, we will have a detailed discussion on comparative advantage and opportunity cost. Comparative advantage is a capacity of a firm or individual to produce goods and or services at a lesser opportunity cost than other firms. Opportunity cost is the loss of other possibilities when one alternative is chosen. After studying this module, you shall be able to first know what is comparative advantage, second know how countries can benefit from trade even if they have absolute advantage in production, third know about what is constant and increasing opportunity cost. First, we shall understand about comparative advantage. It is a state of producer where it is well matched for production of one product than another product. Good A can be formed more efficiently than good B for example. This contrast is done in terms of opportunity cost of each good, not in terms of actual production cost. Opportunity cost is how much you are able to produce of the good B with the same amount of factors and other resources that it takes to produce one of the good A. This is the trade-off how much of good B must be sacrificed in order to get one more of good A. He observed two important principles of economics. The first one is that nations behave in the same way as individuals do economically. Whatever is economical for people is also economical on a macroeconomic or large scale. The second thing he observed is what we call the law of comparative advantage. When a nation has a lesser opportunity cost in the production of good, we conclude that they have a comparative advantage in the production of that good. Everyone has an opportunity cost in producing goods at lesser opportunity cost as compared to others. This theory explains that a nation should specialize in production of good in which they have comparative advantage. Examples To comprehend how the concept of comparative advantage can be used to the real world, we consider an example of two countries producing only two goods, motor cars and commercial trucks. Using all the resources, country A can produce 30 million cars or 6 million trucks and country B can produce 35 million cars or 21 million trucks as shown in the table. In this case, country B has an absolute advantage in producing both the goods but it has a comparative advantage in trucks as it is in a relatively better position at producing them. Country B is 3.5 times better at trucks and only 1.17 times better at cars. However, the utmost benefit and the broadest gap lies with the production of truck. Hence, country B should specialize in trucks production, leaving country A to manufacture cars. Economic theory proposes that if country applies the principle of comparative advantage, collective output will be increased in contrast with the output that would be produced if both the countries try to become self-sufficient and allot resources towards production of both the goods. Considering this example, if country A and B allocate resources evenly to both the goods, combined output is cars is equal to 15 plus 15 is equal to 30 and trucks is equal to 12 plus 3 which is equal to 15. Therefore, the world output is 45 million units. Opportunity cost ratios. It is being capable to produce goods by using fewer resources at a lower opportunity cost that gives countries a comparative advantage. The slope of a PPF shows that the opportunity cost of production. Raising the production of one good means that less of another can be produced. The slope reflects the lost output of Y as a result of increasing the output of X. Having a comparative advantage in X, country A sacrifices less of Y than country B. In terms of two countries producing two goods, different PPF gradients, 
mean different opportunity cost ratios and hence specialization and trade will increase world output. Only when the gradients are different will a country have a comparative advantage and only then will trade be beneficial. Moving on to the discussion of law of increasing opportunity cost. The law of increasing opportunity cost states that as you raise the production of one good, the opportunity to produce other good will increase. The law is best explained along with a graphical representation of the production possibility frontier also known as the PPF. The PPF is a graph showing all combinations of two goods that can be produced with the available resources. In this lesson, let's assume we can produce either baseballs or puzzles. The PPF shows the combinations of baseballs and puzzles we can make given our resources. If we make only baseballs, we can produce 60. If we make puzzles only, we can produce 40. Let's assume we start with making all baseballs. When making all baseballs, there are some resources that would be more efficient if allocated to producing the other good. Let us take an example. If one person was actually skilled at wood carving, but we were producing all baseballs, the person would perhaps be more efficient making puzzles. So you start to move off the end point and make a combination of baseballs and puzzles. With every extra puzzle you make, there is an opportunity cost of giving up baseballs. Since the law of increasing opportunity cost states that the cost of producing the additional puzzle increases as you move along PPF. The first resource transferred to making puzzles are those that were not suitable to make baseballs. However, as you continue to increase puzzle production, you start reallocating resources that were better at making baseballs than puzzles. Thus, the cost of making an additional puzzle is at the loss of more baseballs than with the initial set of resources that were allocated. Increasing marginal cost simply means that as the production of one good in the two good model increases at the expense of the production of the other good, increasing amounts of other product must be given up in order to get each additional unit of the good whose output is increasing. The theory presumes that markets are perfectly competitive, there is perfect factor mobility without any diminishing returns and with no transport cost. The reality is probably very dissimilar with output from each input subjects to diminishing returns and with transport cost. This will make the PPF for every country non-linear and bowed outward. If this is the case, full specialization might not create the level of benefits that would be found from linear PPF. In other words, there is a rising opportunity cost related with increasing specialization. For example, it may be that the maximum output of cars produced by country A is only 20 million compared with 30 and the maximum output of trucks produced by country B might only be 16 million instead of 21 million. Hence the collective production from trade might only be 46 million units instead of 51 million units initially predicted. Next we discuss the criticism of comparative advantage theory. The principle of comparative advantage can be criticized in several ways. First. It may overstate the benefit of specialization by not taking into consideration a number of costs. These costs include transport costs and any external costs associated with trade such as air and sea pollution. Second, complete specialization might create structural unemployment as some workers cannot transfer from one sector to another. Third. Relative prices and exchange rates are not taken into consideration in the simple theory of comparative advantage. For example, if the value of X rises comparative to Y, the advantage of raising output of X increases. Fourth, comparative advantage is not a static theory. It may change over time. 
For example, non-renewable resources can gradually run out, raising the production cost and diminishing the gains from trade. Countries can develop new advantages such as Vietnam and coffee production. Although having a long history of production of coffee, it is only in the last 30 years that it has become a worldwide player, seeing its global market share rises from just 1% in 1985 to 20% in 2014, making it the world's second major producer. Fifth, many nations strive for food security. That is, even if they should specialize in non-food goods, they still favor to have a minimum level of food production. Sixth, comparative advantage theory is derived from an extremely simplistic too good to country model. The real world is far more complex with nations exporting and importing many different goods and services. According to Paul Krugman, the recurrent application of economies of scale by global producers with help of new technology means that various countries comprising China can produce very reasonably and export surpluses. This along with an insatiable demand for choice and variety means that the countries typically produce a variety of products for global market rather than specialize in a narrow range of products rendering the traditional theory of comparative advantage almost obsolete. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. In the theory of comparative advantage is basically the impression that even though one body may be superior at producing a good than the second body, it still may be beneficial to trade with the second entity if they have lower opportunity cost. An individual has a comparative advantage at manufacturing something if he can produce it at lower cost than anyone else. Having a comparative advantage is not similar as being the best at something. In fact, Somebody can be entirely inexpert at doing something, yet still have a comparative advantage at doing it. The PPF illustrates the numerous combinations of goods that a country can make when it fully utilizes its resources. The constant slope of the frontier exhibits the constant opportunity cost, unit of good A sacrificed to produce one unit of good B. A concave PPF exhibits the diminishing returns to scale or increasing MRS. It means that the number of units of X sacrificed to obtain one additional unit of good Y goes on increasing as we go on increasing the production of Y.